What's going on YouTube? I'm Hunter with AEM Electronics, and in this video, we're going to dive into the channels tab in Dash Design 2 and discuss how to adjust and assign channels to your layouts. This will cover um, configuring custom channels, um, take a look at the items in the description below so you can jump to any section that you need to see. So let's go ahead and just open one of the basic setup files first. So we go to File, Open Setup. All the files on your computer by default will be saved in your My Documents folder under AEM Dash Design Setups. And uh, we'll open a app specific setup file for an AEM Infinity ECU. The first one on the list here will give us a good starting point. Um, over here on the side you can see a preview of the screens that are on that layout. But we'll just go ahead and start with this top one right here. Now, by default here, we have the channels list. Click on the channels. These here are all the channels that are configured in this layout. And these are all the channels that the Dash is going to be receiving from the standalone ECU. In this case, it is the Infinity ECU. Each of these channels can be configured and modified to suit its purpose. Most of these channels you'll simply configure automatically by having your display unit set. Then, uh, then you can change the units if needed. We can also change our AFR value from AFR to lambda to AFR ethanol, whatever suits your uh, your tuning preference or whatever units you're familiar with. Now, new channels can also be made for auxiliary channels that we wire in. In most cases, this will be done through a CAN expansion module, something like the AEM6 channel or AEM22 channel CAN sensor module. When adding a, uh, a CAN sensor module, we'll have to configure the channels um, and say if we have a pressure sensor wired in we'll need to configure that channel for that pressure sensor. You have to start off by selecting going to the CAN tab, importing the CAN DBC for the module that you have. For this example I'll be using the 6 channel, open. It'll open and you'll be able to import all the channels for that CAN sensor module. In most cases, I'll recommend only importing the channel that you're going to be using. I'll just import one resistance channel and one volts channel that I have my sensors wired to. Press OK. So those will then appear in our channels list here. Analog resistance and analog volts. In order to have that channel display correctly, there's a couple different ways we can do that. Now for the resistance channel, we'll start with that one. And then we'll say diff temp. Depending on what sensor you're using will depend on how you scale these units. Now if you're using one of the AEM sensors or something in our sensor library, we can simply go down to sensor library, category, temperature, fluid, and because the value is coming in in ohms, we'll select one of the scalers here that is referencing ohms right here. So in this case, I'm using the 302013 for my diff temp, and it is in ohms. So we'll click that one right there, and that's it. Simple, simple. Now, for example, if you were using a temperature sensor and is not in our sensor library, from there you would use a function. Now, this is the function for that pressure sensor. The input would be the resistance value that the sensor is outputting to the sensor module. The output value here is the value that you wish to see on your display. In this case this is temperature in Celsius. Each of these breakpoints can be modified and your function will change accordingly. Now for your variable voltage item, um, let's say we have that wired to a shock position sensor. We'll select analog volts 3 as the primary input. We'll name it shock travel. In this case, it potentially could be a, uh, a linear uh, shock travel position. We know it will output, let's say, 
five volts and at 0.5 volts your travel is at zero however at 4.5 volts you know that the sensor is at 300 uh, millimeters so you would simply input this the units you don't necessarily have to set in this case but this will allow you to have the scaled data in your log and on screen for tuning and chassis setup if this was a pressure sensor instead like let's say uh, we're monitoring uh, boost pressure the uh, easy way to do that category map for manifold absolute pressure and select one of the pre-configured sensors here if, uh, if you don't have one of these sensors you can also look at the manufacturers sensor data sheet they'll either list it as a function where you can input those numbers in the uh, in the graph here you can also input the channel as a, a linear function if the sensor data is given to you in that manner um, something like our 3.5 bar we could reference the sensor data sheet so right here is the transfer function it's also what you would input um, it's the slope line formula right here we have our offset and right here we have our scaling factor so i can plug these into the software as well so that would be a scalar of 12.5 and an offset of negative 20. so i could do offset negative 20.95 with a scalar of 12.5 that would be the appropriate way to scale that style of sensor. So another way we can scale data is by use of a text item, and then we can also use a, uh, a filter. Um, so the two cases where, uh, where I would probably use those is one first one with the text item can be via when using the mode switch. So I'll just make sure we have that channel imported. So we have the engine mode switch status here. We'll import that channel. And then we'll also import the fuel level channel from our six channel CAN sensor module. Now with the engine mode switch status, I'll make a new channel, name it engine mode primary input will be engine mode switch status and with a text channel what we can do here is we can put in our engine modes then assign a label to what each of these modes are now this will be dependent on which modes you're using and how they're configured in your ECU then we can have it show up accordingly so we can have mode one be low boost, mode two could be high boost, mode three could be high boost E85, and nitrous. Maybe just a uh, no boost setting, and then maybe we have an all out kill mode where we have high boost with E85 and nitrous for a quick spool setup um, and we just we need to know which one's which that is a easy way you can create a text item based on um, a channel input and then uh, another way uh, another thing we can do is go over a quick fuel level setup so we have our fuel level sensor here um, and we can make a new channel call it fuel level Let's say it's in uh, fuel level in percent. Primary input is fuel level. And in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create um, a function for our fuel level. So let's say uh, at zero, it's empty. And at say 200 ohms, it's full. So that's from zero to 100% fuel. Then, uh, then to prevent the, uh, the fuel sloshing in the tank from causing your fuel level to constantly fluctuate, we'll implement a filter on the channel. 
and for fuel level what I'll usually do is a, a rolling average and by changing the update period and the rolling period that'll prevent the fuel slosh from uh, from constantly fluctuating the needle or the value um, this is process that's done in a ton of OEM applications with the fuel level and we can change it here so for something like fuel level you don't need it to update um, as frequently as say something like engine speed so we can have the update period set at every let's say every two seconds and then it's also going to have a rolling average calculated over a period of every two seconds as well. So something like that can be implemented. That'll help dampen the signal coming from that, uh, that fuel level sensor. From there, to get that channel on screen, all you need to do is go to screens. For example, on screen one, then we'll just need to set the input for the graph as that item. So in this case, we'll do um, boost pressure that we just created. So we can set boost there. We'll set the start negative 14.7 for full vacuum. The end at 35. Then we will then go in here, change the break points negative 14.7 at the top end. 35 at the large end. Okay, negative 14.7. We have all our visual breakpoints. We'll change the name here to boost 2. If we want to configure this item right here for fuel level, we can start by changing the caption to say fuel level. Then next we will change the values for percentage. So that'll be 0, 100, and this will be 50. Then we will set that channel. Uh, the needle for boost pressure will change that to our fuel level channel. And then we'll also change the start to 100 and the end to 0. So the sweep will be accurate for our fuel level. Next, we would probably uh, want to put in a new dynamic text display. This would be a good one, good way to add that mode switch indicator. Um, so here we can uh, click on the engine mode that we selected, press OK. Um, and here's where our engine mode could be displayed. This could be a, a quick indicator to know which mode we're on without having to, uh, to look to our knob. We could also um, change the knob and see this engine mode change in real time.